In this lesson, I am going to discuss orthogonal and orthonormal sets. Suppose that we have a set of vectors in an inner product space V. And every pair of vectors is orthogonal. So meaning to say, if I get any two distinct vectors and I get their inner product, it's always equal to 0. Then we say that the set S is orthogonal. If in addition, each vector is a unit vector, so that means the length of each vi is equal to 1, then we say that S is orthonormal. If it happens that S is a basis and it is orthogonal, we say that it is an orthogonal basis. If S is orthonormal and it is a basis, we say that it is an orthonormal basis. For example, the standard basis in Rn is an orthonormal basis. Note that whenever I give the inner product space Rn and I do not indicate the inner product, automatically it means that I am referring to the Euclidean inner product or the dot product. Let us recall that the standard basis for Rn is this set. You have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on up to 0, 0, 1. So note that if I get any two distinct vectors there, I get their dot product, it will always be equal to 0 because the ones will appear on different positions, right? And of course, the length of each vector in the standard basis is equal to 0. Here's another example. Let us show that the following set is an orthonormal basis for R3. Again, I am referring to the Euclidean inner product. I have my three vectors here. Let me call this V1, V2, and V3. So first, let us check that this is really an orthogonal set. First, let us compute the inner product of V1 and V2. So this times this, we get negative 1, 6 plus 1 over square root of 2 times square root of 2 over 6 is 1, 6 plus 0. So that's really equal to 0. Next, let's get inner product of V1 with V3. This is 1 over square root of 2 times 2 thirds minus 1 over square root of 2 times 2 thirds. This is minus because I have negative 2 thirds there and of course plus 0. This 2 will just cancel so this is still 0. And lastly, we have to get V2, V3. This times this is negative 2 square root of 2 over 18. Plus, this times this is also negative 2 square root of 2 over 18. And then, 2 square root of 2 over 3 times 1 third is 2 square root of 2 over 9. This plus this is negative 2 square root of 2 over 9, so hence this is equal to 0. Hence, these three vectors really form an orthogonal set. Next, we check that they are all unit vectors. To do that, we will just compute the lengths. For V1, the length is square root of... Square of this plus square of this, so you get 1 half plus 1 half. That is equal to 1. The length of V2 is, the square of this is, we have a square root here. So that's 2 over 36 plus 2 over 36 plus the square of this is 8 over 9. And this is equal to 1. And lastly... The norm of V3 is the square root of 4 over 9 plus 4 over 9 plus 1 over 9, which is really equal to 1. So hence, we have shown that it is an orthogonal set and each vector is a unit vector. Therefore, this is an orthonormal set. Let us discuss another example. Suppose that P is this polynomial and Q is another polynomial in P3. 
we define their inner product as follows. So basically, again, we're just multiplying the coefficients. We multiply the constants. We multiply the coefficients of x with the other polynomial. Same thing is true for the coefficients of x squared. And we add them all up. The standard basis, 1x x squared and x cubed, is orthonormal with respect to this inner product. Remember that you have to know what is the inner product defined on the inner product space to determine whether a set is orthonormal or orthogonal. Just to give you a quick example, what is the inner product of 1 and x? 1 is 1 plus 0 times x plus 0 x squared, correct? And x is 0 plus 1 times x plus 0 x squared. So therefore, from this definition, the inner product of 1 and x is just 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0. And that is equal to 0. So if you do that, for the rest, you will get that the inner product is equal to 0. And of course, the length of all the vectors here is equal to 1 according to this inner product. For example, what is the length of x? It's the square root of this one, z squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared. That's equal to 1. Here is a nice thing about orthogonality and linear independence. If S is an orthogonal set, automatically S would be linearly independent. However, note that the converse is not true. For example, I have the vectors 1, 2, and 2, 0. So, they are linearly independent, right? Why are they linearly independent? These are two vectors which are not scalar multiples of each other. So therefore, they are linearly independent. But they are not orthogonal. Because the dot product, I did not define the inner product. So that means I am referring to the dot product. The dot product of the two vectors is equal to 2. This shows that linear independence does not imply orthogonality. What would be a corollary of this? If we have an inner product space of dimension n and we have an orthogonal set consisting of n vectors, it will now be a basis for v. So why is that? Because if the set is orthogonal with n vectors, then we know from this that it would be linearly independent. But a linearly independent set with n vectors, where n is the dimension of v, would automatically be a basis, correct? So, for example, let us show that this set is an orthogonal basis of R3 with respect to this inner product. We studied this inner product before. This is the inner product generated by the matrix A, where A is this matrix. So here are my three vectors. First, let us compute V1, V2. By definition, it's equal to V1 transpose A, V2. V1 transpose is 2, negative 1, 0, times the matrix A. V2 is 0, 1, 1. This times this matrix is equal to 2 minus 1, so that's 1. 2 minus 2 plus 0 is 0, and 0. Times 0, 1, 1, you really get 0. Next, let us get the inner product of V1 with V3. V3 is 0, 1, negative 2. This times this is 1, 0, 0. Multiply it with 0, 1, negative 2. This is equal to 0. Lastly, we have the inner product of V2 with V3. So that's V2 transpose AV3. Get 0, 1, 1.
this is equal to 1, 2, 1 times 0, 1, negative 2, which is equal to 0 plus 2 minus 2. It's equal to 0. So therefore, this set is really an orthogonal set. And since you are an orthogonal set consisting of three vectors, and three is the dimension of R3 automatically, that means that it is a basis for R3. Now suppose that V1, V2 up to Vn is an orthogonal basis for a vector space. Vn, we get an arbitrary vector W. Since B is a basis, then we know that we can write W as a linear combination of the vectors V1, V2 up to Vn. The nice thing about having orthogonal basis is that we can easily compute for the coefficients of your vectors. It turns out that the Cis here can be computed as follows. We have the inner product of W with Vi over the length of vi squared. In other words, w is equal to this. Inner product of w and v1 over the length of v1 squared. Inner product of w and v2 over v2 squared times v2 and so on and so forth. Take note that if we have an orthonormal basis, then this length here would be equal to one. So therefore, our coefficients would be even nicer. We have this one. If I have an orthonormal basis and I get an arbitrary vector w, then w can be written as inner product of w with the first vector times the vector, of course, plus the inner product of w with the second vector, and so on. So this is saying that to get the coefficient, it's just equal to the inner product of w and the vector here, ui. So take note, ci here is the coefficient of ui when w is expressed as a linear combination of the vi's. Here's an example. Suppose that W is 5, negative 5, 2. I want to find the coordinates of W relative to the orthonormal basis shown below. So here is my W and my vectors. I call them U1, U2, and U3 to remind myself that this already forms an orthonormal basis. So therefore, when we write W as C1, V1, the C2, V2, the C3, V3, the coefficient of V1 is just the inner product of W with U1. I no longer have the denominator length of U1 squared because that will just be equal to 1. This is equal to 5, negative 5, 2, dot product with 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 0. So that's 5 times 3 fifths, 3 minus 4 plus 0, that's equal to negative 1. For C2, let's just get the inner product of W with U2. This is equal to 5 times negative 4 fifths is negative 4 minus 3 plus 0, so that's negative 7. And lastly, the coefficient of V3 is the inner product of W with U3, which is equal to positive 2. So those are now the coordinates, negative 1, negative 7, and 2. In other words, W is equal to negative V1 minus 7V2 plus 2V3.